Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Spiritual Leader Podcast. Uh, I'm here with my favorite co-host, the one that has put up with me for all these many, many, many many long years. 22 long years. 22 (laughs) long, prosperous, and fruitful years. Laura's actually taught me most everything I know about life and godliness. (laughs) I hope I've taught you at least one or two things, have I? Taught me what, to what endure. What stands out? What stands out about me? Let's go ahead and get it out in the open. Yeah, what's, yeah what's... I've learned to endure, to persevere. <laughs> to... Uh, stick-to-itiveness. Stick-to-itiveness. Uh, no, uh, we've been talking about, Laura, walking in the spirit, and um, one of my favorite subjects, uh, one of the most, one of our minister friends said this years ago, some messages are simple, they're just not easy. Yeah. Easy to walk in. It's powerful. Yeah, it is. Uh, but we've been talking about walking in the spirit. And, um, you know, Christianity, uh, Laura, is spiritual. Yeah. And uh, we were actually, I was ministering uh, recently in a service. And I, it just, it's kind of been stirred in me the last, I don't know, on and off the last several weeks about how it, what seems to me, uh, that a lot of the body of Christ is focused on some intellectual version of Christianity, meaning, you know, man, if we could just learn all, you know, that the Bible teaches, and obviously knowledge is important, mm-hmm. but uh, I made a statement last night, and I was kind of meditating on it uh, since then, you know, about how that the Word of God is spiritual, yeah. And I quoted the verse. It said, you know, in John 6, Jesus said, my words are spirit yeah. and they are life. And I think so much of, of the time <clears throat> we as Christians, we intellectualize the Bible and we think that, you know, if we could just uh, know more or understand more, you know, with our intellect, you know, the things of God and, and the scripture, et cetera, that will be more effective Christians. But um, I, I also quoted uh, last night um, our good friend Lois Toucher of Shekinah Glory. She made a statement years and years ago that just kind of stuck with me so powerfully. And uh, it was something along the lines of that if we as Christians only walk in what we understand about God, then we're going to miss 99% of all who and what God is. Mm. Meaning, the deeper meaning of that is that God is a spirit. Uh, his words are spirit. We are spirit beings. And that's how you connect with the Father. That's how we connect yeah. with God. Uh, Kenneth Hagin said uh, this, that after 15 years, uh, early on in his ministry, obviously Brother hagan has gone on to be with the Lord, uh, but he said for 15 years early on in ministry, he studied this particular subject about spirit, man as a spirit, etc., Uh, the spiritual realm. And he said after 15 years of just kind of really sticking with this subject, he came to this, what seems to be simple, this conclusion. And he said this, man is a spirit, he has a soul and he lives in a body. But he said this, with my spirit, I contact the spiritual realm. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you, if you're aware you can write notes, you need to write this down. Mm. Because for... A really one of the most powerful men of God of our generation, Kenneth E. Hagan, for him to say something like it took him 15 years to come to this conclusion, 15 years to come to this. It's not something that we should just overlook or just let it kind of go in one ear and out the other. He said with, he realized after 15 years, with his spirit, he contacts the spiritual realm. Yeah. And he said, with the soul, he, you contact the intellectual realm. With the body, we contact the physical realm. Man is a three-part being. He is a spirit, he has a soul, and he lives in a body. But when we're talking about walking in the spirit, the things of the spirit, uh, everything about Christianity is spiritual. I think that's where a lot of people, <laughs> they struggle to connect with God. Mm-hmm. 
because they're trying to connect with him here mm-hmm. through intellect and through knowledge. And then you'll, you'll hear the frustrations of yeah. Christians. You know, I don't, I don't feel like God is near. I don't, I, I can't feel him. I can't sense him. And it's mm. because they're trying wow. to connect with him through the wrong channel. Mm. But when you connect with God, your father, spirit to spirit, you step into that place. You mm. know he is there. Yeah. You know, we don't go by senses, but you know. Yeah. You're not going to question where is God? Am I? Can-? No, you're. <laughs> you're going to know. <laughs> you're going to know. There is this connection that's going on. But I think that's where a lot of frustration comes in for Christians is because they're trying to connect with God, but in a wrong manner. Yeah, somebody said it this way. They said, you know, when they had an experience with God, maybe early on in their salvation, you know, that when that experience waned, then they were struggling trying to look for another experience. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody said it this way, uh, you know, they were trying to find an experience to match the experience that they had when they first experienced God. And while we thank God for experiences, you know, in our, in our walk with the Lord in our faith and our Christian lives, uh, experiences sometimes are far and few between, but the reality and the revelation that, we are spirit beings, uh, and we are called to walk and live in the spirit. So I, I want to kind of jump into some of these things, some of these scriptures. I have kind of two things on my heart, uh, and probably one I'll just carry over into another podcast. But um, I want to look at some verses about walking in the spirit because we've got to 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 kind of be able to draw the distinction here from scripture. I mean, know faith comes by hearing, yeah, you know, and hearing from God's word. So we want faith. Yeah. To be birthed and stirred in each and every one of our yeah. hearts as we kind of look into God's word. But I want to kind of start uh, with Galatians. I had kind of referenced this scripture recently. And I'm going to look in uh, verse 19, Galatians 5, verse 19. And this is uh, in the New Living Translation. It says this, when you follow the desires, the Apostle Paul said, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, or King James may say flesh, mm-hmm. Uh, it says the results are very clear. When we walk in the flesh, the results or what our life produces is very clear or obvious. And he said, here are some of the things that walking in the flesh produces. He said sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, which may not just be sexual things, lustful pleasures. Lust is just strong desire. Yeah. So lustful pleasures, idolatry, which is not sitting and bowing to an idol. Mm -hmm. Idolatry is putting anything before God. Yeah. Sports can be an idol. Yeah. Uh, Television can be an idol. You know, a relationship can be an idol. Yeah. Uh, Sorcery, uh, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, uh, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties. And I love how he puts this on, Laurie. He says, and other sins like these. Yeah. In case he left one out, <laughs> anything that could be around any of these areas and yeah. other sins like these. Uh, so he says, again, this is the fruit or the works produced by living a flesh ruled life. Yeah. yeah. I like how you say that. Yeah, a flesh, flesh ruled, ruled life. life. I like what uh, one of our daughters said the other day, giving a testimony. She said that she went through a period in her life where she was having some ups and downs and, and going through some challenges. But she said she got the revelation that I wasn't bad. Yeah. I was just worldly. So good. And I thought, wow, what a powerful statement. Yeah. And maybe uh, you, like Laura and I and, and everyone else in the world, uh, maybe some of these things are being produced in your life or seem to be more pronounced, these fruit. You know, maybe uh, you can check the first few off the list, sexual imp- immorality or impurity, lustful pleasures, etc. And you think you're good. Yeah, you think you're good, <laughs> but we all kind of would wrestle with the second half yeah. of that. Uh, you know, idolatry or hostility or fighting or jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, et cetera, et cetera. So if some of these fruit are, you know, uh, operating in our lives, then it's just, it doesn't mean that we're bad. It just means that we are allowing our flesh or natural uh, lives to Mm. govern our 
uh, our existence. Flesh ruled rather than spirit ruled. That's right, flesh ruled. I, I read recently 1 Corinthians 3 where Paul said he was speaking to the Corinthian church and he said, by this time I thought that you Corinthians would be more spiritual, or we could say it this way, more spiritually developed, yeah. or would have come to the point where you had matured more in the spirit. But Paul said, 1 Corinthians 3, mm-hmm. 1 through 3, I believe, he said, but you haven't. And I want to speak to you as I would to a spiritual person, yeah. but I still have to communicate with you as I would to a carnal person, the King James yeah. says, which we could say a flesh governed person. So we, we, I said in a service uh, last night, you know, that it doesn't matter how long you've been saved. You could yeah. have been saved 50 years ago, but still be at a place of spiritual immaturity that yeah. you were when you first got saved. Yeah. Spiritual maturity or learning to live and govern our lives by the dictates and leadings of the Holy Spirit does not just happen. Yeah. That's something that we have to actually be proactive with and learn how to walk in the spirit. That's it. Uh, So it's just one of these things when we're talking about walking in the spirit, there is a definite pathway to spiritual development. I love what Paul said in that same passage, 1 Corinthians 3. He said, I fed you with milk. I fed you with milk, spiritual milk. What do we do with babies, newborn babies? They feed they, they live on milk, right? Uh, that's how they get their sustenance and that's how they begin to grow. Well, as babies in Christ, as newborn believers, that's how we begin to grow. Yeah. We, we grow by taking the milk of yeah. the word or the basic principles of the word mm. and we begin feeding our spirit. Spirit to spirit. Yeah. It's and, just a spirit. And that's where pastors come in, Laura. Yeah. Pastors are one of the greatest gifts and a, and, a, and a powerful gift that Jesus has given to the church. Now there's five gifts in Ephesians 4, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Yeah. But pastors are nurturers. Yeah. They're, they're the ones that really come alongside of baby Christians and nurture them and feed them the milk of the word. But the goal of a pastor is not to, to coddle a newborn Christian yeah. forever. The goal, I remember a story uh, one minister said, he said he was a pastor of a church and he said that this member of the church had been there for many, many, many years. And he said that some new people were coming into the church and getting saved. So the pastor, his attention went towards these new believers, rightfully so, right? And he said this long-term member got upset and got his feelings hurt because the pastor wasn't paying him as much attention. And he kind of stopped coming to church, missed a service or two. And eventually, you know, the pastor went and visited him and he basically confronted him in love and said this, he's like, sir, you've been at this church for X number of years. You should be one that has grown spiritually and is helping to nurture these new believers in the things of God. But Laura, it just proves the point that someone can be in church for a long time and never grow spiritually, never grow. There's well, because there's something that you have to do. There's something you have to do. You can hear and hear and hear and hear all day, every day, but until you start to put into practice what you've heard, then it's not gonna do you much good. Yeah. I remember uh, I was thinking as I was ministering the other night, um, I, I didn't get to it and I probably will in, a, in the, the next week uh, in our Monday school, but uh, I had on the bottom of my notes um, a teaching entitled How to Train the Human Spirit. And w- w- it, there's four steps involved. Number one is meditate on the Word of God. Because the Word of God is food for our spirit. Yeah. The Word of God is... it. it it was never intended for intellectual knowledge, to be just intellectual knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen people that know the books of the Bible frontwards and backwards, but they're riddled with sickness. They're operating in a spirit of poverty. They're yeah. not an effective witness. They're spiritually immature. Mm-hmm. So knowledge alone is not, intellectual knowledge is not is not going to get the job done. But when we see God's word as spirit, yeah, uh, spirit food, yeah, then we begin to take that into our spirit, and the word of God 
used properly will begin to develop our spirit. Yeah. So he said the first step in, in growing our spirit is meditating on the word. The second step is putting the word first. So how do we grow in a spiritual life? Well, number one, we've got to meditate on God's word. Meditate means to ponder, to chew on, to think over, to mull over, to, you know, somebody use the example of like a cow uh, chews its cud. It eats the grass and it goes into this upper stomach and then gross, I know, but the cow then brings that cud back up yeah. from that first stomach and it begins to chew on it again to help with the digestion, you know, process uh, for that cow. But the word of God is similar. We, we get the word of God in us and then we bring it back up and yeah. we begin to chew on it. We begin to mull over it. We begin to think about it. So number one, meditate on the word of God. Number two, uh, put the word of God first place. Uh, uh, and the third one is, and one of my favorites, is how to develop the human spirit is to practice the word, which is kind of what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, the Lord gave me this thought years ago about really a, a basic principle of developing spiritually. And every one of us can do this. It, it's, a, it's a no brainer, but practicing the word will, we will have ample opportunities on a daily basis to put God's word into practice. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, uh, when you're faced with an opportunity, let's say you have an un unexpected financial need come up. Well, you have an opportunity. If you have built faith in God's word on the subject of finances, when you are faced with a financial need or challenge, you have an, um, an opportunity to put God's word into practice. Yeah. And the way that we grow spiritually Really, that is one of the key components to growing spiritually is we've got to look for opportunities to put God's word into operation. I said recently, Laura, that, uh, you know, much of the church world has, it's almost, and I don't mean this the wrong way because I've lived under this myself. And as a minister, I've done this myself. We give messages, uh, we hear messages, and we're, we're really, we don't have any kind of plan and place to apply what we're hearing. So it's almost like we go to a movie, we watch a movie, and then we leave, and what are we going to do with that movie? Well, nothing. It was... Entertainment. It was for entertainment purposes, right? Well, much of the body of Christ has gotten to where we'll come to a church service, we'll hear oftentimes the most anointed message, but we have no mechanism in place to actually apply, excuse me, that message to our lives. Yeah. So one of the ways we grow spiritually is by looking for, now when you get this in your understanding, you begin to look for opportunities. Yeah. Uh, you know, in the context of marriage, we're always gonna have opportunities to grow and apply God's word as, uh, as it pertains to us working together daily opportunities. We're going to have opportunities to apply our faith if we've heard God's word on the subject of healing. Mm -hmm. When a symptom comes, yeah. what do we do? We apply the word yeah. that we know. Yeah. If it's, somebody said at one time, the proof's in the pudding. I heard one minister say this, the proof's not in the pudding. The proof is in the eating of the pudding. Mm -hmm. Meaning this, you may know a lot of scriptures. You can know the Bible frontwards and backwards, like we already said, but it's not what you know up here it's what you know in here and what you actually walk yeah. in. Victory really is found in the dailiness of what you are doing on the daily basis. Yeah, I heard Vic you say that yeah, recently. Yeah, it's like victory's there. It's like you growing and developing spiritually. Like it's not just gonna happen. Mm. So it's really, it's like you, you're you're disciplining yourself, you know, to to feeding on the word of God, allowing it to go deep and then looking for mm. opportunities. And really you won't have to look very far no, for opportunities, you won't have to look very far. but the moment a symptom hits your body, you know, it's like you had that moment that you can be alarmed, you can run to your medicine cabinet, or you can, you know, pause for a moment and say, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the Lord. Mm. I'm going to speak life over my body. I'm going to resist this sickness and, you know, and ask for God's counsel, his wisdom. He'll give it to you when you ask him. Wow. But what do you do in those different situations? So the more, I think, conscious you become of every day 
opportunities that come my way, I'm going to choose the way of the spirit rather than the way of, you know, being flesh ruled. You know, our flesh wants to run to the to the the help center or wants to lash out in anger or whatever it may be. But the way of the spirit, you know, those are the fruits of the spirit right there. And you're growing in your love, your joy, your peace, self-control, all the good little stuff right there that, (laughs) yeah, Yeah, we need to pick pick that up in the next podcast and kind of look at the other side of the coin of what a spiritual, a spiritually governed life looks like. Yeah. Well, Um, and that really is, that's where peace and joy is found. So the more you begin to walk in the spirit, because if you're struggling to keep your peace, if you're struggling Mm. to, to walk in joy, it's like, you just, you feel like you're always under it and you're like, gosh, this Christian life, it just seems so challenging. Well, there are challenges, you know, in the Christian Mm. life and in just life in general. But as a Christian, You've got victory. You've got victory living on the inside of you. Victory's already gone ahead of you. So you shouldn't just be struggling and barely getting by. Any challenge, any obstacle that comes your way, you already know I've got victory. So I'm just going to simply walk through this challenge. I'm going to walk through this obstacle knowing that victory, that a way has already been made. Yeah. And that's really, that's a life lived in the in and in out the of the spirit, spirit. Yes. yeah because you said it victory is already there that's it uh healing is already there the blessing of god the favor of god yeah. the power of god it's, it's all already it. there it's already a reality but it's a reality in the spiritual in the realm spirit. it's not in the flesh it's not in the soul yeah. it's in the spirit so really you and i uh developing in the things of the spirit and learning how to live and walk in the spirit is the only way. It's the only way. And the more you begin to practice it Mm -hmm. and choose that life, it'll become second nature. And it's like you'll just you'll remain in tune with the father so good and you'll 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 know things you'll sense things i mean even before things happen like you'll have these little alerts and stuff it's just that's walking in the spirit yeah you know it's like you know you're not alone Mm. (laughs) and this is a process and we're going to get into this in the next podcast talking about the process of because you know what realistically you may step out to live by faith and, and you may fail or come up short, but it's like with anything in life, get back on the horse, get back on the horse. If you fail, yep. the, the scripture says a righteous man falls seven times, but he gets, gets back, back up. up. Uh, victory really is getting up one more time than you've been knocked down. That's it. And that is a process. I remember I picked up a baseball bat when I was a kid and, you know, played little league baseball and, I mean, why do, why do you go to practice? Because you have to learn how to become a good baseball player. Yeah. And that's what it is walking in the spirit. Maybe you stepped out in faith one time and you failed or didn't, didn't receive like you thought you should. That doesn't mean you're a failure. It means you're just learning. You're growing. And that's what the spiritual life requires of us, that we, you started with it, that we endure and we stick to it. Yeah. Uh, until we start seeing results. That's the process of growing and developing in the spirit. So it's powerful stuff. We'll get into more of this in the following podcast. Listen, Lauren, I love you. We're, we're praying for you. We believe that God is doing awesome things in your life. So uh, until we see you again, God bless you.